Hello and welcome to another Manga Spotlight. This is Spill It Cocktail Nights, and this is a Magical Girls series. However, unlike most Magical Girls, this is not targeted towards young girls. I would say this is targeted towards, I want to say adult men, but that comes across as like this series has a lot of like sexual stuff in it, and it really doesn't. Let me read the summary. Let me talk about the series, and you'll get where I'm kind of trying to come from here. So the description is, let's just say my best friend's a Magical Girl. The cocktail nights are popular, secretive battle maidens who cleanse the people of their stress. No one knows of these girls' true identity. Well, they shouldn't. Only I, Riku Daichi, knows of one of their secret identities. But we have to keep it under wraps, presenting a love comedy with confidential levels of mistake. So basically, it's about a guy who knows the identity of one of the magical girls. Like, no one knows who these magical girls are but he knows the identity of at least one of them. And he knows because this magical girl is his friend. The thing is, is that the magical girl does not know that he knows who she really is. And that's where some of the comedy comes from. Some of the comedy, as you can see from this, there's uh, one of the themes is cross-dressing. And some of the comedy also comes from that. Basically, the magical girl poses as a guy at the school. So his, his friend is a girl posing as a guy. Everyone thinks that this girl is a guy except for Riku our main character our main character knows that his best friend is really a girl his best friend does not know that Riku knows his true gender and that's where some of the mishap comes especially since Riku is in love with his best friend so we start off with Riku and he's being chased by a stress man and stress man is basically an epidemic in this city and it's the monsters in this world Basically, when someone is under a lot of stress, they get taken over by a stress man and kind of become a monster. And Riku's being chased by one of these monsters. And as he's being chased, he sees a cat in front of him. And he scoops up the cat and he keeps running because he doesn't want the cat to get hurt. He shields the cat with his body and screams out for help from the cocktail knights. And that's when the cocktail knights show up. And the cocktail knights are the magical girls. So we have uh, Red Eye, the super princess. We have Shining Sun, a sister to all. We have Valencia, the Prince of Beauty. And we have Color Milk, Forever 17. And anyone who's uh, a drinking aficionado will know that all their names are based off of cocktail drinks. The cocktail girls show up, and as they're fighting off the stressmen, Valencia appears in front of Riku and kind of gives them a smile and tells them, like, you know, you were really cool back there when you saved that cat, and takes off. And then we cut to the next day where Riku is on his way to school. And we get a bit of a story about the uh, the cocktail nights. About how there's plenty of stories of people falling in love with the cocktail nights after being saved by them. How they're basically super popular. They're like idols. Like, you know, anyone who's familiar with Japanese idols, they're pretty much like that. Like the paparazzi's constantly following them around. They have advertisements everywhere. But despite all that, nobody knows their true identities. Like No one knows who they really are behind the dresses. Which is kind of funny because none of them wear any masks. As you saw from the image I showed, like they, they wear stuff on their heads, but it doesn't hide their face and it doesn't really even hide their hair. So you should be, you know, you would think like that people should be able to guess who they are. But I guess it's the whole like Superman syndrome where... People are just ignorant <laughs> and naive, you know, like kind of like how like Clark Kent wears glasses. And now no one knows he's Superman when it should be really obvious. That's kind of like what we got here. So, yeah, Riku is basically talking to himself about how nobody knows who their real identities are except for me. And then we see Riku's best friend, Sora. And Sora is Valencia, the prince of beauty, the magical girl who you know said that you were really cool back there and at this school Sora as I mentioned earlier cross-dresses as a guy and pretends to be a guy like he pretends to be the son and heir of a famous dojo everyone believes that Sora is a guy to the point where like everyone and he's, he's really popular like he's really athletic he's smart so girls are constantly coming up to him and giving him love letters and stuff like that but Sora, unlike a lot of other pretty boys, quote unquote, characters that you see in manga and anime, he's not like stoic. I say he, but it's actually she. She's not stoic. She's not like, 
you know, mean or anything like that. In fact, she is nice to everyone, is always smiling at everyone, but she's she turns people down basically by using the excuse. Um, as a son and heir of a dojo who's attending school, such a relationship is forbidden. However, I will read the feelings he wrote here. So he lets people down in a nice way. She lets people down in a nice way. Sora is also very serious about her coming across as a guy. Like she does her best to come across as manly and stuff like that. Basically, a lot of incidents come up that put into question Sora's gender identity. And Riku has to kind of come in and say, like, you know, like, what, what, what are they talking about? Like, everyone knows you're a dude. So, yeah, like, for example, we, we get a scene where they're playing basketball and Sora trounces Riku. But even afterwards, it's like, you know, you were good. Let's go again sometime. And afterwards, they're climbing up the steps to uh, get changed. And because they were just playing basketball, they're both sweating. And because Sora's sweating, her shirt is sticking to her body. And um, we can see the outline of a sports bra. And of course, Riku sees this. And before anyone else can see it, Riku grabs a towel and wraps it around Sora. And Sora's kind of like, like, what are you doing? And Riku's like, you know, you're going to catch a cold. Come on, let's go. And later on, when they're changing, other guys show up. So Riku immediately strips off his clothes and yells, you know, I'll be weird and hurry up and change. And Sora just kind of laughs and is like, yeah, yeah, you are acting kind of weird. Um... And Riku's like, you know, like, what are you guys looking at? Fight me. Basically, we have moments where Riku goes out of his way to kind of embarrass himself and make himself look kind of silly to draw attention to him so that no one's looking or paying attention to Sora so that they don't discover her true gender. So that's where a lot of the comedy comes from. So later on, we kind of like see like their teacher, and their teacher is obviously Color Milk. And I don't know if Riku knows who the teacher really is. We know for sure that Riku knows Sora as Valencia. We don't know if he knows the identities of, of the other magical girls, but those of you who like read the chapter, you guys will be able to figure out who's who. So we have a scene where they're up on the rooftops eating lunch, which is kind of funny because this is something I've noticed that in almost every anime and manga, whenever the main characters are eating lunch, it's always on the rooftop. I don't know why, why that's a thing, but yeah. So they're on the rooftop eating. And then um, Sora's, you know, brings up the conversation of like, you know, are there any girls you like? And Riku's like, why are you asking me something so like girlish? And as soon as he says that, he notices Sora starting to get embarrassed. So Riku immediately is like, oh, you know, that, that's not what I mean. I mean, everyone knows you're the prince of the school and all that. But Sora kind of pushes even more and is like, but really, like, are there any girls out there you like? Like, what do you think of our, our teacher or our classmate? And Riku's like, ah, eh, they just have big boobs, but they're not really my type. And so Sora asks, so like, who is your type? Like, maybe I can help you out. Riku's like, I don't think you can help me. But Sora's like, come on, maybe I can. So he admits, I like Valencia. And then, of course, we get this, like, adorable moment where Sora kind of drops her food and she looks all, like, flustered and embarrassed and hides her, her face in her hands. And Riku just decides, I'm going to shoot my shot and I'm going to keep going. And he's like, you know, I, I like how, like, she gives smiles to frighten people, like, while every like while the other girls get the attention because of their overly feminine qualities, because like these other girls are like shapely and you know big boobs and all that, <laughs> Valencia is not. She's kind of the flat as justice kind of character. But he he basically he goes on to say like I like her for her personality, which just makes Sora even more embarrassed. But before they can um, go even further into this conversation, they overhear like some of the students. Um, who are big fans of the Magic Girl Girls, the Cocktail Knights, talking about, you know, who, 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 who's sexier? Like, oh, this one's sexier, this one's sexier. Like, I have a whole folder filled with, you know, sexy pictures of uh, color milk. You know, I have a lot of dirty pictures of this girl. And they're like, you know, there's no way we'll ever find dirty pictures of Valencia. Of course, Sora is overhearing this, so she gets really embarrassed and she runs off. And then eventually uh, we get to them in their class and they notice that one of their teacher is slowly starting to morph into one of the stress men. And I thought this was kind of funny. So as he's morphing to a stress man, he, he goes, you know, word got out about my hidden cameras in the school. With all that stress, I'm turning into a stress man. You should run, kids. And then um, he's like, hurry, my feelings are overflowing. I want to see some dicks. Caw, caw. And then, he turns into like a bird stress man 
And just this page right here, this panel, like I want to see some dicks as he's morphing into a monster. Like I started laughing my butt off. Oh my god. So yeah, he 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 put hidden cameras to look at dudes, which is an interesting take because you know usually it's male teachers preying on the female students, but we have a male teacher preying on male students. So he morphs into a stressed man and he grabs Sora and like a news copter shows up and is videotaping all this and Riku like looks and he realizes, oh man, like usually the cocktail nights will take care of this, but everybody is watching um, Sora right now. Like Sora is in, the arm, is in the hands of this monster. So Sora can't transform because if Sora transforms then everyone's going to know Sora is Valencia. I got to do something basically. I got to do something to, to save her and also something to draw attention away from her so that she can transform. So he runs up the steps and he smashes into the classroom and Sora is screaming for him to run away. And uh, Riku, like in a badass mom is like, you know, shut the hell up. I'm weak, I'm uncool, but Sora, I'm not weak enough to run from the person I like. And he flips the stress man, the bird. And then of course the stress man notices him and punches him. And as the stress man punches him out the window, <laughs> we get a really funny moment where Sora basically starts pulling down his pants and flashing his penis <laughs> so that everyone's attention gets drawn to him, including the monster, because as we know, the monster wants to see some dicks. So Sora shows him his dick. And well, he shows him in every in the entire world his dick. But this gives enough time for Sora to escape the monster's grasp, duck into uh, the classroom away from the cameras and everyone's eyes and transform into Valencia. And, you know, Valencia defeats the stressed man, saves the day, tells, you know, Riku, like, hey, like, you know, you were even cooler than before. So they're on their way walking back home and Riku's like, you know, I wonder, like, if I were to ask Valencia out, if, you know, if she would accept. And Sora's like, no way, right? And then, of course, boom, that's like a shot to the heart for Riku. Who's like, you know, like, stop laughing, like, so Riku again kind of tried to shoot his shot and got shot down. But Sora's like, you know what? Like, you really like Valencia. I'm going to do you a favor. I just sent you a photo. I hope you use it. And it's kind of like, what are you talking about? Use it. And then Riku looks at the photo and it's, I want, it's not a sexual photo of Valencia. It's basically, it's a cute photo of her in the bathroom, but she's wearing her outfit. So I guess this qualifies as a dirty picture, even though it's really not. But yeah, Sora's like, I know like back there you put up an act to save me and you know, you didn't boast about it. Like you're a kind guy and you're my best friend and you were super cool. And you know, I'm sure Valencia liked it. And as a way, to, you know, for you to forgive me for making fun of you being in love with Valencia, I just wanted to help you out by giving you this photo. And then Sora kind of walks away and Riku's like, you know, damn, like, what do I do? Because the girl I love is my best friend who kind of shot me down without realizing it. And also is pretending to be a guy despite the fact that I know for sh for a fact is a woman. But yeah, that's the end of the first chapter. I highly recommend reading it. It's it's a great... Well, it's kind of hard to say it's a great series because there's only one chapter. It, it's a great chapter. Let's just say that. It's a great first chapter. If this is what we're going to be getting with you know the rest of this series then I'm all aboard, I'm all for it. And I like the fact that Riku, despite being the best friend of a magical girl, isn't useless. Like he's useless in the fact that he has no powers, but he's not like, he's not like one of those sackless main characters that you see who are like afraid of girls and you know, are always just there just to be saved. Like he's not a mantle in distress. Like he, he risks his life to, save a cat he risked his life to save his best friend like he is willing to put himself in danger even though he knows like he, he, there's nothing he's really going to be able to do to, to take on the stress man um like so i thought that was kind of cool like he has his moments of you know badassery and also like I, again like the comedy bits with him trying to hide sora's identity without sora realizing that he knows is, it's kind of funny too. I wonder how far they can go with that. Yeah, also, it's kind of funny that we have a Riku and Sora main characters who we have, I mean, we have Riku obviously in love with Sora and we have Sora 
possibly being in love with Riku but not being able to do anything about it because she's a magical girl trying to hide her true gender. But yeah, it's just like, oh, Riku and Sora, kind of like Kingdom Hearts. And they're kind of shipped as the one true pairing. That's interesting. (laughs) But yeah, that's Spill It Cocktail Nights. At this point, I'm just kind of rambling, but good series i like it i guess one of my guilty pleasures is i do like magical girl stories but of course obviously i like magical girl stories that are more geared towards to men you know not necessarily in in the fan servicey way but just in a like i like the more action kind of but i've always been a fan of like the transforming here well i'm a fan of heroes in general like i like superheroes i like you know characters who try to live a normal life by day while hiding the fact that they're actually, you know, a world-saving superhero. So, like, I like, you know, like, comic book characters, superheroes. I like magical girls. I like, like, you know, the um, tokusatsu. I think that's how you pronounce it. Superheroes. Like, you know, your Kamen Riders, your Power Rangers, your Sentai, your Ultraman, your Garu. Like, I love that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, this, this is right up my alley. Uh, especially because, I, I mean, I'm a huge fan of comedy and stuff like that. So anytime you can get like a lighthearted comedic action series, I'm always for that. So yeah, again, I'm starting to ramble, but I highly recommend checking out this series. It's really good. And I'm hoping that uh, the rest of the, cha- if the rest of, again, if the rest of the chapters are as good as this one, this is going to be a fantastic series. But tell me what you guys think. Hope you guys enjoyed as you guys are, who are watching this on YouTube will see, I, I will be showing some interiors on my manga spotlight from now on. I will be showing interiors until or if I get copyright struck. Um, Japan seems to go crazy when it comes to showing any kind of like artwork, uh, which is why usually in my manga spotlights when you're watching this on YouTube, and of course Odyssey, since Odyssey is just a mirror, you only get like one page, one artwork. And it's usually like the cover or um, a promotional art. It's because I've been copyright struck before. Um, I used to show interiors and I got copyright strike. And then I decided, all right, I'm not going to risk my channel anymore. But I'm going to see if I can still do it. Just because I like showing interiors. It helps explain the, st- the series more. And I feel like it does a better job of selling the series for you guys. If you guys can actually see what the interior artwork is like and stuff. So I'm going to try doing that. I'm going to be showing a lot less than I do on my bit shoot version. So if you guys want to see more interior artwork, you guys have to watch my bit shoot or my mind's version. If you watch this on YouTube or Odyssey, you're going to see limited art, uh, interior artwork. And if I get a copyright strike, then I'm just going to go back to what I was doing. Where I'll, I will show the interiors on bit shoot and mind, and I will just show promotional art on YouTube and Odyssey. So hopefully Japan realizes that striking a channel doesn't help them and that you know maybe just have people keep their their videos up so that we get more attention on your series especially on series that do not have uh, an official english translation which is most of my spotlights i know there have been some that have been officially translated in english but most of them are not they're just fan translated and that's the whole point of Spotlight, is to spotlight series that people might not have heard of. And I know my channel is really small. Hopefully, you know, the channel will grow enough and I can get more views and more eyes on, on my videos. And my my goal is to get to that point where I can spotlight, you know, a great series and maybe give it enough attention that, you know, an English publisher is like, you know what, a lot of people seem to like this series, let's officially translate it. And then that way we can have people actually buying these series and giving more money to the to the manga artists and stuff like that. And that's that's my, my goal anyways for my manga spotlights. Hopefully I, my channel grows um, so I can get to that point. But but yeah, that, that, that's the whole point of the manga spotlights is to just get more eyes on these and... Um, Hopefully save like some series from being axed because there have been plenty of manga series that I've loved and they just they just gone the axe because no one no one cares about them. So hopefully you know if, I, if my channel can grow to the point where I can prevent that that'd be awesome. I don't know if I'll ever get to that point, but that that would be that's basically like my my dream goal for for this channel is to be able to to reach that point. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm rambling again. Um. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tell me what you guys think. If you guys have any series that you guys recommend, let me know. 
I know some of you guys have been um, requesting that I do um, a follow-up review on a series on series that I've already spotlighted, and I do plan on doing that. Uh, I just have to get around to, to doing those. Sometimes I have to wait until we get to like a good arc where I can, you know, explain some more stuff. But um, I, any, anytime you guys recommend something, I do plan on doing them. So you, your, your stuff aren't ignored. If you guys recommend series, I do put them on my to-read list. Sometimes I'll read them immediately. Sometimes I'll read them eventually, depending on how far into the, uh, you know, how many chapters there are. If there's very few chapters, I'll read them immediately. If there's a lot of chapters, I'll get to them eventually. Anytime you guys like recommend, hey, like, I'll, you, you did a spotlight for this, and I would like to see you do a follow-up, I will do those. Like I have a list of here's the series I'm going to be, you know, talking about and it go it goes on there. So any recommendations you guys give or any requests you guys give will eventually get done. Um, don't feel like you're being ignored. It just, I, it takes a while for me to get to them, but I will get to them. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and I hope to see you guys next time. Later. So what'd you guys think of that video? I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe, hit that bell for a notification, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far, and I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see, and I hope to see you guys next time. Later.